What industries stand to benefit the most from hardware acceleration? Um, so in my view, hardware acceleration can really enable real-time analytics. And when I, real-time is usually used very loosely for a lot of industries. Some industries could say real-time is one day's worth of data, and some could be talking in milliseconds or microseconds. And uh, when I'm talking about real-time uh, analytics, I'm focusing more on this millisecond or streaming data, really, where there's no lag between data being coming in and actual processing of that data. And I think the biggest advantages of that today are in industrial analytics, and that encompasses that encaptures a lot of different areas, including uh, manufacturing, transportation, warehousing, and a host of them. So anybody who's looking at a lot of streaming data in real time, in milliseconds, with no real lag, uh, can benefit with hardware acceleration, which can use for visualizing, cleaning, aggregating, sorting this data. And in a talk, you look at opportunities in hardware acceleration in the context of real-time analytics. Mm -hmm. What innovative approaches or advances are you seeing in that space? Um, yeah, there, there are quite a few. So uh, more, the more common application of hardware acceleration that is applying GPUs, FPGAs, and custom ICs in data analytics are in the visualization space. That is the data exploration, viewing them beautifully uh, in real time with no lag or in applying them for machine learning or deep learning, the more traditional uh, iterative and data parallel algorithms. Um, there have been very few works which I'm finding in, say, the bulk of data cleaning or data aggregation or even alert correlation, like if you have a lot of alerts coming in from your system, how do you identify which are the ones I really want to look into? An application of that would be fraud detection or incident responses. Uh, and I'm seeing some works in that space but those are the ones I'm really keeping my eye out for because I, I feel there's a lot of white space, a lot of opportunity for these technologies together, including being accelerated on hardware and making real-time systems uh, available for them. And you've also made a case for an end-to-end -end mm -hmm. hardware platform for data analytics. Can you talk a little bit about what that would look like and how it would work? Yeah, um, so let me give you my, uh, like, uh, you know, a 30 seconds feel on why I think an end-to-end -end analytics system makes uh, for uh, for a good case is because the system, which is an end-to-end -end system, which can just take in data and do all of the activities which are required for processing data, which is data cleaning and aggregation, and the deep learning and machine learning, and the visualization, and the alerting system. So the entire loop, if it's in one system, it can take, uh, it can be more efficient. So it does not have to worry about putting a system back onto the hardware accelerator and then back onto your regular CPU, and then back onto an FPGA, and then back onto your CPU. Uh, so if everything is just on that one system, which is either GPU or FPGA or a custom IC, will inherently be much faster because it can save all this uh, data transfer times. And also if the data is already in the form as is expected from the next step in your data processing framework, uh, then again the data uh, access and data computations and all of the data uh, transfer times will be just much faster. And so when I mean like what I mean by an end-to-end -end analytic system is just one uh, system, which could be a hybrid of CPU plus a coprocessor, but this one system solving all of the parts without doing a lot of back and forth of the data. So uh, yeah, so that's what I mean by an end-to-end -end analytic system. And this might be a naive question, but how is cloud computing affecting that? Uh, no, that's actually a very interesting question. Uh, more and more enterprise apps are moving to cloud computing, so more and more of your data today now resides in the cloud. So you want to make sure that whatever system you design can work in conjunction with the current trends. Um, so a lot of the cloud computing uh, providers out there already have uh, instances with, say, the NVIDIA GPUs or the Intel Xeon fees out there. And so uh, today those systems are more expensive than regular instances, but uh, you know NVIDIA and Intel, they're all making a case for having more of these uh, hardware-assisted uh, instances to be out there and having more people use them and having better programming and uh, software ecosystems around to support the design of these solutions. Um, so I, I think it's this, this uh, hardware accelerator systems will work in conjunction because you already see those opportunities and you see these big companies making a push for their hardware to be on the cloud and, um, and that can enable the real time challenge as I mentioned for, uh, for any of these industries. Even, um, so even GE, when they're working on their Predex cloud system, they would be looking at you know, GPU accelerated instances so that all of this data they're collecting can be sped up during analysis there. So I see this as a big opportunity which works in conjunction with the cloud computing. 
Interesting. And so how close would you say we are to achieving real-time analytics? And how do you see the space evolving over the next five to 10 years? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, in the next uh, five to seven years, I w so there are some, it's quite a few of these solutions, you know, like for processing incoming data or for uh, deep learning or for visualization, which is already uh, handling the data throughput and the speeds in real time in milliseconds. Uh, for data cleaning and data aggregation and alert systems, there have been some ideas out there. And I think uh, the initial you know, products, like the technology being commercialized, should be in the next two to three years. But doing this in large scale and you know, having everybody access to such systems could be around five years, and I would not be surprised. And so moving a little more broadly, what areas of emerging technology are you keeping an eye on? When you read papers and mm -hmm. studies, what is it that you're reading and what are you finding most interesting? So um, I try to be very open with all these new ideas coming in around, you know, like this whole starting from a rules-based system all the way to a completely deep learning system, which people talk about it as a black box that you only see the inputs and the outputs. And what are all the things in between? And across these technologies, which applications do they best fit for? So not everything works well with rules-based, we know that. And again, not everything works well with deep learning systems because of the amount of time and the amount of computation that is required. So now I'm trying to keep my eyes open for like what are these in-between other systems? And some of them are generative models, some of them are probabilistic computing, and trying to understand what are those first set of uh, applications where these technologies will be better than just a rules-based or just a completely like deep learning solution. So that's something I definitely keep my eyes on. Um, other than that, like more inside the infrastructure, like anything in the middle layers, uh, you know, above the hardware and below the application layer, which can speed up real-time processing, which mean like, you know, how can you better do data cleaning, data streaming, uh, data aggregation, uh, with or without hardware acceleration, I keep my eyes out for. Um, yeah, those I think were the two, uh, the, uh, you know, at the top of my list. Yeah, and so on a more personal level, what people and projects are you following? What are you finding personally exciting mm -hmm. these days? Um, well, given my background, I do look at a lot of the hardware acceleration stuff because I spent like almost eight to 10 years uh, looking at hardware acceleration for different applications, uh, you know, from very embarrassingly parallel class of problems to very controlled logic problems and trying to see if there is a way to speed up those applications. So hardware acceleration is general. I keep my eyes out for. I think another set of uh, problems which can use hardware accelerators or not is just probabilistic computing and approximate computing. I think uh, approximate computing has uh, the potential to change pretty much all of the steps of data analytics. And hardware acceleration, like using FPGAs with a limited number of bits or other ways, or like a, a lower power, can only further speed up these probabilistic computing. So basically relying on the fact that your application may not need all of the accuracy which the system can provide, and leveraging that gap is something I, you know, I find very interesting. So I try to read up a lot on this space. Well, thank you very much for talking with me today. It's been Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Thank you.